Hey, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to tell you about Jupyter Notebooks. So in this video, we're going to cover the basics of what a Jupyter Notebook is, how you can open a Jupyter Notebook and see what's inside, and then what you can do with Jupyter Notebooks. So the first thing you need to know is that Jupyter Notebooks are document files, uh, just like uh, other documents that you probably have been working with before. So for example, you may have worked with Microsoft Word documents. So a Microsoft Word document is a file, and inside that file there's some encoded information, and then when you run Microsoft Word, it reads that file and interprets what's in there and displays it on the screen for you in a pretty way and allows you to edit it. So um, Jupyter Notebooks are, are very, very similar to this, except for there's, there's one extra catch. So um, I have a Jupyter Notebook here uh, called Jupyter.IPY Notebook. This is the typical extension for a uh, Jupyter Notebook. The IPY stands for IPython. That was the old name for Jupyter Notebooks. So IPY Notebook. Uh, we can look inside this file with the less command. And then we can see that it contains uh, code. And that uh, information encoded there is actually kind of plain text. Uh, you can see this, you know, the phrase Jupyter Notebooks here, and you can see my name. Uh, and you can see that there's some different slides, and there's going to be a beginner's guide. You can see there's some information in here, but it's not in a pretty format. I and mean, this, this is kind of a mess right here. We don't know what that is. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to open it up in a program, just like we open up a Microsoft Word document in a, in a Word, doc, uh, Word program. Um, the, the catch is we can't actually directly open this with just a single program. We're going to need two. So what we're going to do is we're going to display this information in a pretty way in a web browser. But web browsers, they can't understand this information. Right? This, is not, this is not HTML. They don't know what to do with it. So what we need to do is we need a second program that can actually interpret this information and then translate it and serve it up in a way that the web browser can understand. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to, we can actually do that all in one step, right? And we just simply used uh, the, the program Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter and then space Notebook. And then we can put the name of the file that we want to open right there. Uh, I could just hit enter right now, but I'm actually going to recommend that you don't open files directly like that. I think you should always start in your home directory. So I'm going to change to my home directory here. And you can just open the Jupyter Notebook itself without specifying a file. So just say Jupyter Notebook. And if I hit enter now, a couple things happen. One, you can see a web browser launches. This is my default web browser. Mine happens to be Chrome. Yours might be different. Uh, so that launches. And second, we get this window here with a bunch of stuff in here. What's actually happened is this X term, this shell here, is now running a web server. So if you're doing this with me, there is now a web server running on your computer. And it is serving up information. The, the web address is going to be your local host, 88888. And we're going to see the tree by default. This is a uh, file finder, effectively. This is your directory tree. It shows you all the different files and, direct and folders you have in your, um, your home directory, because that's where you started. I want to go to tutorials here. And in this directory, so that's my, where we started, this is you know, subdirectory tutorials, and now we can see this file Jupyter, and there's a little notebook next to it to let you know that that is a Jupyter notebook. So I can click on this, and that is how you open up a Jupyter notebook. So we still have this file finder here, and you can go back and you can open up other files and other tabs if you want, and you can do anything else you would normally do in a, in a web browser. You can open up a new tab and go to Google or whatever. It's just a regular web browser. Um, but here's the document now, and so we can see how this is organized here. Uh, we have this nice toolbar at the top uh, with different menu items and different uh, icons for doing different things. And then below we have the actual documents. And the way these documents are, are constructed, they're actually broken up into what are called cells. So this blue uh, border here is saying that this is a cell. This is another cell. These are different cells. And we're going to talk about what the different types of cells are uh, shortly. Um, but first I want to point out that there is a full guide to Jupyter. You can use uh, this guide here and again since we're in a web browser you can just click on a link and it'll just open right up in the same uh, same program. Uh, this will tell you some of the basics about Jupyter Notebooks and how it all works. If you want to know more information 
Um, but for now, we're just going to give you a, a quick introduction into um, the two main cell types uh, in, a doc, in a Jupyter Notebook um, document, which are markdown cells and code cells. So markdown cells, these are what you want to use if you just want to type um, text, if, you want, if you're writing prose or if you want to have some pretty looking um, uh, um, display, you can, you can include images. It's anything that you would put in a, a normal uh, kind of written document. So this, this is all this image and everything is there, is in, a, in the markdown cell. So the way you um, um, create cells, by the way, is you can use this plus sign here and it'll create a new cell for you. If you want to change this cell to a markdown cell, you click on it so it's highlighted like that. Uh, don't click in here, but you have to click on the border here. And you type M and that'll change it to a markdown cell. Or you can change Y and it'll go back to a code cell. Right? Uh, so what you can do in markdown cells, uh, these, these have actually already been run, that's why they look pretty, but you can see that they actually contain code. If you double click on them, if you click on the border like that, it'll show you what's inside of these. Okay? So each one of these cells uh, is actually constructed of several lines of codes and in a markdown cell uh, there's a couple um, types of codes you can use. You can use regular HTML. Right? So HTML, um, you might know uh, that's where you have these tags uh, like this. This is an image tag and I'm saying uh, look at this, this is the source for the image. This is a, an address on the web and I want that to be 250 pixels tall and wide. And then we have uh, some other tags here which are actually not HTML. I'll tell you about those in a second. Um, but if we want to run this cell, so that means we want to go from being in code mode to being in pre-display mode, you have two options. One, you can hold down the control key and then hit enter. That'll run it. The other thing you can do, and you can do this again after the cell's already been run, is you can hold the shift key and you can hit enter. And you can see the difference there is that when you hit the control key, you run the cell and you stay in that cell. When you hit shift in return, you go to the next cell. It runs it and goes to the next cell. Okay. So um, you can display in markdown cells, you can display regular HTML, but they're called markdown cells because you can also display, um, you can also use this, this mini language called markdown. So what markdown is, is it's just kind of convenient shorthand for doing the things that you commonly do in HTML. So for example, this is a heading here, and there's a way to do that in HTML, but there's a very convenient way to do it in markdown, which is just putting hashes. You put one hash, and that's level one markdown, two hashes, level two, three, four, that's your H1, two, three, four, just like that. So I'll run that cell again. So it's, it's a, a very convenient way for, for doing, um, uh, for marking up your text and making things bold and making them big and changing the fonts and all that. Uh, and links are actually very convenient too. Uh, if you want to make a link, you can just put a square bracket another square bracket inside whatever you put inside there that's what's going to be uh, displayed and then you put parentheses and then you put the, the link that you want to uh, link to and then when you run this cell you can see your markdown there and you have the link there so if you want to know more about markdown you can actually follow that link and here is going to give you um, a listing of how you can do things we talked about the different heading types um, and we'll talk about doing code in a second um, so there's a, a lot of things you can do there that make it easy to make these kinds of documents. An important note is that it includes the ability, it includes MathJax, that means you can use latex commands. So if you want to do this kind of uh, pretty mathematical equations, you can just type it in native latex, you can control enter and run that code, and boom, you've got a, a beautiful latex equation right in your uh, Jupyter Notebook. So the last thing we're going to talk about are the code cells. Uh, code cells are what really gives Jupyter Notebooks their power. Um, you can directly run Python right in this cell right here. So this is again a code cell where you, uh, it's not a markdown cell with M, it's a Y for code cell, that's the default cell type. And I can say something like X equals 3 plus 6, and then I can say print X. This is Python code, and I can run that with my uh, control enter. And there it goes. It actually runs, and it displays the answer in here. Uh, that's, that's the magic going on here, is that when you hit Control-Enter, it's taking the information in cell, and it's sending it back over to your web server. Your web server is saying, okay, we got some new input, and then it sends it back to your web browser, 
and it says now display nine. All right, so that's how that magic works. Um, so by default, you're using Python, should be Python 3. There are other languages that you can use. You can switch, actually, between different languages. Um, but Python is a good place to start. So please go ahead and play around with that and enjoy.